Since your favorite village boy is on a journey to change the narratives of Africa, I know for sure that I've been showing you guys that Africans don't just live on trees. And I know that I've been showing you most beautiful gated communities in various countries in Africa. But coming here for the first time, I feel like this is on another level. I said it, yes, indeed, this place is on another level. This place is well organized. Lastly, when you live in a place like this, you connected with nature because you're not just going to live in your room, you have a serene environment. You know what, they call this place Ayu Mensa Park, but from today, I'm going to change the name and call it the Green City because this place is greenish. You know what? Stay tuned. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby. Please don't forget to subscribe to be part of this awesome family. Believe me, we can still hit 500,000 by the end of this month. Be part of this family by subscribing to the channel. You've been hiding from me. Maya, I've had to respond to all the inquiries from your video. You know, like most of my subscribers thought that I was lying to them because I promised them that after uploading the video here, the next video is going to be that interview with you. They kept me busy, brother. They kept me busy. You've seen the response from the video? It's extraordinary. It's absolutely extraordinary. Did you ever believe that people appreciate what you do? Like my, my, it's not so much what I do, it's what you do. No, come on. That is your work and I was just promoting what you've done. I can't take the credit for that. Me, I just came here walk around your neighborhood and just promoted it that's it for people to know that there are africans that are doing something magnificent on the continent so i just want to say congratulations and keep up the good work thank you maya thank you and i want to say something to you as well oh wow because we build communities here we've got a community of 200 people and i think we've done a decent job of it but you've built a community of almost half a million people and you've connected the diaspora all over the world. There are Africans who are in Asia who are, who are tuning in. There are people in the African diaspora from the Caribbean, African Americans, mm -hmm. Ghanaians, Nigerians in the diaspora. And you're helping us con connect, uh, connect ourselves and connect with each other. It's extraordinary. To be able to share what we're doing in Ghana as African entrepreneurs with the entire black diaspora without having to go to CNN or BBC or CNBC, to be able to speak directly to our people is extraordinary. So th on behalf of all African entrepreneurs at various stages, Maya, what you're doing is amazing. I wanna say thank you so much. I know you personally, but I know that somebody out there is watching us for the first time. Sure. Who are you? My name is Kofi Anku. I'm a partner at IE Mensa Park, which is the development where mm -hmm. we're sitting in. Uh, I've been involved in real estate in Ghana for the last 20 years, wow. as well as agriculture. I'd love for you to come and see my greenhouse at some point. I would definitely going to check it out. So you're just, you just not into real estate, but rather greenhouse. Yeah, also agriculture. Uh, you have to let me check it out today. Please do, please because do. Because I know there will be accent for it, you know. Excellent. <laughs> but Kofi, were you born in Ghana? I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. Born and raised in Cleveland. And you lived there your whole life? I lived there until I was in my 20s. Okay. And then I came back to, uh, to run a family real estate business. In Ghana? In Ghana, yeah. My in father Ghana. is a retired cancer specialist. And he oh. started investing in Ghana in the mid-90s. So your father is a Ghanaian? My father and mother. Both of them? Yeah, my mother is from Sekundi. That's my hometown. You know? I know. The best is in the <laughs> West, man. Best is in the West. Wow. Okay. So yeah, you, we just like brothers. That's you know? right. That's why we connected so fast. Up. Absolutely. Kofi, tell me, why the return? Wait, wait. I haven't finished my story. Oh wow. So my father <laughs> Continue. comes from the Volta region. Okay. A town called Alavano. Have you heard of it? In the Volta region. Yes. I've heard it before. You know what it means? No. It means it will be good. Wow. So we're making it good. I saw the video you put up um, about your morning routine in the village. Okay. And I was so moved. Why? Because this, was, this is our family story. 
My father is one of 16 brothers and sisters. He didn't own a pair of shoes until he was 13. And the interesting part of his story is not simply the journey from the village to being a world-class oncologist, but also the values and learnings that he brought from his childhood and his upbringing, which is exactly the same upbringing that you were, you were showing so beautifully in your video. I'm just trying to tell people that it's time to know your roots, go back to your roots, revisit your roots, because sometimes I feel like Africans forget where they're coming from. Sure. So that's why I'm trying to bring all those content back, and I'm so glad that both you and your father no, this is relate. What, this, to it's not just relating, this is what <laughs> makes us strong. Exactly. It's discipline, uh, it's that spirit that we see in our villages that we need to try and bring it. Uh, some of, the, some of the comments they were talking about, well, is the architecture too Western in a development like this? And this is actually kind of based on the village concept. You know, if you look at, f at farming communities in the West, mm -hmm. there's small houses in the landscape and they're far from other people. In an African context, all the people are clustered together mm -hmm. and they go to their farms. Exactly. All right. So here, we're, we've tried to increase the densities, which improves security. Right? You can kind of see what's going on in your neighbor's house and in, in, the, court, in, uh, yeah. in the street. Um, there's a community spirit. Mm. You don't feel like you're isolated and you're living behind one wall mm. in a compound. But we're all kind of huddled together. It's quite nice. That's interesting. Now I'm trying to understand the architecture behind this sure, whole yeah, of course. Immense apartment. Absolutely. But, you know, like me, my main focus is Kofi, why you left America and decided to come to Ghana to start a business like this. Why not doing the same business in wherever you are? You know, I think the question you asked is interesting, and, it, and it, uh, it, it pushes me into an area that I find really fascinating. I think that a country like Ghana needs to tie in uh, and rope in the diaspora. That Ghana, Africa, needs the global black diaspora. And equally importantly is that the entire black diaspora needs a strong and prosperous Africa. We have to work together. And it's not simply a question of unity. It's also a question of the different skill sets that we bring to the table. And I'll, I'll explain specifically. Um, so as a Ghanaian business person, if you go to a bank, you're borrowing money at 11%, 12% interest rates. What? Right? An African-American business owner uh, or homeowner may get a mortgage for 3%. Right, so money in the West is cheaper. So having a brother or a sister over there who you can pull into your business, who has access to capital. You know, I think the, the cash flow for black America is something in more, more than $1.5 trillion a year. Mm. So just from a financial perspective, and you're looking at a market on the continent of a billion people plus. And African Americans are about maybe 40 million people. So connecting African Americans, including Ghanaian Americans, including the African diaspora, with the continent makes great business sense for both parties. There are opportunities here where their money will, will be far more impactful, where they can get uh, better returns, Ooh. investing in Africa, and, they're de and we're developing a country. This, this development is probably the largest townhouse, townhouse community in West Africa. Kofi, like what I read about you is that you are not in this alone, yes. but your partner is an African-American. That's right. Is that true? That's right. So I partnered with a company called Black Ivy, and it was founded and is led by an African-American woman lawyer called Cheryl Mills. And she's an extraordinary person, and I was very excited to do this deal. Um, and she brings a wealth of knowledge and skill and a huge network and um, a lot of energy to the project. So it's been an extraordinary um, journey. Has, has she been to Ghana before? She's here, in, she's in and out of Ghana all the time. So not only is she involved in, in, in her firm, uh, not only are they invo involved in residential real estate, but they're also doing some amazing work in healthcare. Wow. They've set up a, a multi-specialty hospital in East Ligon. Um, she's also involved in the creation of an industrial park I know that's something you're passionate about, is manufacturing. Uh, so this is going to help facilitate, because if you come to Ghana and you want to build a factory, sometimes getting the land is an issue. 
getting the services, the roads, electricity, water connection. What they've established is pretty much a turnkey solution. So it's, it's Kofi, since your compelling. Partner, since your partner is an African American, let's go more into this. You know, I just want to know, mm -hmm. like you working with an African American on the continent, do you think that we need more of this? Like, I mean, I mean the African diaspora partnering with Africans on the continent to help develop the continent. Do you think, do you think something like this, more of this, we should encourage more of this on the continent? This is absolutely the way forward. Absolutely. This is the formula for our success. I'll give you an, another example. Let's look at the chocolate industry. Okay. Right? Seventy percent of the world's chocolate, or cocoa, comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast, two countries. Seventy yeah, percent. Exactly. Right? This is a, almost a, two bil a $200 billion industry. Global industry. And when people think about chocolate, they think of Belgium. They think of Hershey, Pennsylvania. There's no cocoa in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It grows here. Right? We need access to those markets. We need partners, African-American partners, based in the U.S. that can help us process over there and manufacture. With African ownership, African-American ownership, and um, really and benefit more from the value chain. Right now, we're only getting 7% mm. of the revenue from chocolate sales globally as producers. And it just doesn't make any sense. It's a huge amount of money. Our entire economy in Ghana is around $60 billion. Wow. Right? So the chocolate industry is literally three times the size of our entire economy. We're fueling it, but we're not benefiting from it. So imagine if we could get somebody like Rihanna right, or Beyonce to partner with our cocoa producers and say, listen, there's a story here that this product, the sugar comes from Brazil, the vanilla comes from Madagascar, the cocoa comes from Ivory Coast in Ghana. This is a black product, and we're happy to share it with the world. But we're imp what's important to us, and the reason why I love your channel, it's all about African ownership. Exactly. Black ownership. Kofi, whatever you're saying, you're trying to say that let's make Africa home again. That's right. It's home already. I'm I mean, saying we I, could have it, to it, join the home. party. It's home already. Exactly. Africa is home already, but it's time for people to claim that Africa is home because I know that there are so many people watching us right now that are contemplating that hey, you know, I was born in America just like you. I, I'm not African. Uh, okay, if my ancestors are from Africa, it has nothing to do with me. So whatever you're preaching, for me, if I should conclude, I would say that you're trying to say that it's time for both Africans in the diaspora and Africans on the continent come together and let's make Africa home again. Absolutely. Kofi, do you think Africa is the future? Maya, it's the present. It's happening now. We're doing it. Wow. This is indeed an interesting conversation. And um, tell us more about Ayumensa Park. What makes Ayumensa Park so unique? So Maya, these are 200 units. We've got a few flats, but mostly townhouses. Mm. And um, for the standard, they're fairly moderately priced. What's interesting about this community, and I say community because the emphasis is not simply on the houses, mm. but also the interaction between neighbors and the security that the community provides. So you've got 24-hour man security. There's CCTV cameras, it's gated, but it feels open. Yeah. You've also got the pool, you've got a clubhouse, you've got a multi-sport court for the kids to play. There's a jungle gym. And there's a beautiful park in the center. We've really tried to incorporate nature. Wow. And um, how much does it cost? So we've got a few two-bedroom units left, 140,000 USD. And then it kind of goes up from there. So there's a four-bedroom, three-bedroom. We've got a few one-bedroom flats that are pretty much sold out. Mm -hmm. And um, Kofi, I think I will help you solve the four, the remaining four. Fantastic. Based on what you've been telling me today. So I just want to tell each and everyone out there, if you're looking forward to move to Africa or buy house in Africa, buy from, you know, buy from Kofi, put your money in Kofi's business and Kofi will definitely give me a cut. Kofi, I Why not? Me Why not? Why not? <laughs> Kofi, let's go to like, you know, we have a lot of African brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Um, if you should give them an advice on how to invest, is it worth it to invest in Africa? Is it worth it to visit Africa? What would the message 
be because you lived in the dark sure. and you're back here so you are the best person to i mean advise our fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora what will your message be well i, I would say this that oftentimes as an entrepreneur you go for a long stretch of time when you're the only person that sees value in what you're doing and then when it reaches a certain point everybody wants to get behind it so the important thing is for them to come come to ghana spend a few months look for opportunities see what you can uniquely contribute what gaps are there and also what you can bring to a much larger market the market is in the u.s the market really is in europe that's where there's a lot of demand you know there's demand here as well but the, the advantage you have as an insider if you're an african-american or if you're a Ghanaian american who's born there um, is that you understand america you're an insider there and you can be an insider here very quickly Right? So you will see opportunities. I mean, look at your channel. This is a testament, right? All you needed was a phone to start your business. And now you've got this threat. The most successful African vlogger, YouTuber on the continent. It's an honor to be sitting here with you, brother. Okay, you, right? <laughs> and I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate your time. Uh, Kofi Ankun, the CEO of what? Uh, Mercury Estates. Right. And uh, we've partnered to create Aimensa Park. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Don't forget to like the video, share, and if you're new to the channel, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby, the village boy from Ghana. And you know what? Do me a favor. Let's meet the 500,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification button so that you can get notifications anytime the village boy uploads a video. I'm going to see you in the next one. I am Mario. Peace out.